Hey, hey, how's it going, everybody? We are here. Uh, we are going to be doing uh, double kettlebell uh, clean and press. Um, so the clean and press is your skill. Uh, and we're going to be using some drills today to help with improving your clean and your press. All right. So we're going to jump right into it. Uh, just a quick little warm up to get you rocking and rolling. And then we're going to be performing some skill work or uh, some drill work uh, to improve that skill. Um, our drills today are going to be learning how to do the barn door, uh, learning how to do the boulder roll, learning how to do the pump press. And these are going to be movement patterns that are going to help with your, uh, your overhead uh, strength. Because the basis for your press is going to be the rack position. If you have a strong rack, then you're going to be able to have a strong press. The only thing that's going to dictate how well you move the kettlebell overhead is going to be the mobility of your shoulders. You may notice that some individuals are able to really, really get a good strong lockout, you know, like just looking like a, <laughs> like a pillar. And then other individuals, maybe they have like a powerlifting background or weightlifting or, or just a regular global gym background. Those individuals are going to let me move you guys over here a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Those individuals are going to have less mobility. However, it doesn't mean that their movement pattern is incorrect. It just means that that's how they move based on their body type. Okay. So remember that whenever you're lifting, as long as you're getting the, the kettlebells from the start to your best finish, that's how you're going to get your best level of strength. Okay. Cool deal. Um, for building up the, the pull, uh, to the rack position, we're going to be doing uh, the mid pull, which is a very, very awkward movement. However, once we have a better understanding of how to actually perform the movement, it has a great carryover to a far more efficient, clean pattern, okay, to where you're not flicking it off of your hips, you're pulling it up into the rack position, utilizing the power from your hamstrings um, and your lats, okay? So remember, kettlebells are leg driven movements. And you finish with your arms. So remember that. Okay? Our second exercise to build up the, the, the pull is going to be um, a row plus a half deadlift. So essentially for that one, we're going to be pulling and standing as we, uh, we extend the arms. And this is going to help with having a better understanding of being patient when you come out of the rack position allowing the arms to go long before you follow into uh, your next repetition, okay? All right, so let's crack on with it. A little bit of a warm up, get the shoulders ready. Okay, if you have a dowel um, or something along the lines of this, we'll do some pass-throughs, okay? About five repetitions, three, okay? And just work it through, okay? You don't have to break any records of mobility, okay? Just try to work it through. And then place it on your shoulders. Okay? And if you don't have a dowel, you can use a broomstick or you can use a band um, or you can just do some arm circles. Okay. And then we're going to work on pressing overhead. Okay. Work the range of motion. You may not be able to get as low, but you're still opening up that shoulder. We don't need to do too many reps. We just need to do enough to get it rocking and rolling. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to stretch out the lats. Okay. So we're going to reach, come through, reach, come through. Good. We're going to go two more. Good. Last one. Good. Now, if you don't have a dowel, no problem. Okay. You can do some arm circles. Okay. Go forward and back. Okay. You can do some rotational arm pressing. So, here to get those shoulders moving properly. Okay, good deal. And then you can do some hinging with some lengthening, okay? Okay, reach. Pushing that butt back, reaching with those arms, okay? All right, good deal. Okay, now that we have that, okay, good. Let's go into the neck. Okay, we're going to look to our right, to our left, uh, nice and easy. Remember, we're not trying to break any mobility records here. Okay, 
And then we'll do some half circles. Some of you might just still be waking up. Good. And then we'll go back. Okay. Next little stiff. Good. If, you're, if your neck is stiff, okay, you can utilize your jaw. Do a little bit of palpating on the jaw right here. Okay. Look up and try to make the bottom of your lip go to your nose. And this is a great one, like if you sit at a desk all day and your neck's a little tight, you can just kind of retract back and stretch out your neck or stretch out your neck muscles. Okay? Good deal. All right, let's go into some big hip circles. Good, good for this one. You really just want to think that you're in a giant, like maybe a cold plunge. Okay, and you're trying to get your, your hips all the way around the rim. Okay. And then we're gonna to go to the knees. Nice and casual, nice and casual. Yeah, cool. All right, so now let's warm up with the kettlebell. Uh, just a nice casual warm up. We're gonna do some around the bodies, okay? We're gonna do five and five. So around the body, one, two, three, four, and five. Good, we'll bring it back to where she came. One, two, three, four, and five, good. Then we'll bring it up to the goblet position, okay? And we're gonna do some prying with a sots curl, right? We're gonna do three reps. We're gonna squat down, we're gonna pry a little bit, okay? We're gonna lower the kettlebell, bring it back up, rise. Back down, pry a little bit, okay? Lower it, back up, Oops. one more. Good, nice big proud chest. Okay. Roll those ankles out a little bit. Okay, and then we're done with that part right there. All right, y'all. So now we're gonna get into some of these drills so we can improve the skill that we're looking to improve, which is going to be the clean and press. All right, cool deal. So first exercise we're gonna talk about today is gonna be the barn door. Remember, our rack position is right here. It's not up here. We want to take advantage of what kettlebells can do for us, which is build up some serious core strength. So if our rack position isn't ready, then our core is definitely not going to be ready. Okay, so we got to get everything strengthening as one single unit. Right? So that means that the load that you choose needs to be at the level of your fitness. Right? If your buddy's doing something, and you're like, oh, I can do that. Well, you might be able to do a couple reps, but those couple reps are going to be not as good. And then the brain is going to remember not as good. So when you lift again, it's going to be not as good. Okay. So lift to your potential and then learn to lift well so you can lift more later. Okay. All right. So with the barn door, all we're doing right here is teaching the rack position and opening and closing. We're not trying to round the shoulders to create anything like this because this is going to be an improper rack position right here. Very, very bad rack position. You may think otherwise, and that's fine, but I'm going to prove you wrong. Okay? If we're in this position right here, okay, and we have our knuckles underneath our chin, and our load is right here, my forearm is at a 45 degree angle, maybe 35 if you're a math, math person. Okay? What that means is that load is going to be pushing down on my forearm, which is going to cause my shoulder to round forward. And if we don't have a strong enough core, it's going to cause me to buckle and spill while I'm in the depth of my squat. Okay. So what we want to think about is our load of our handle and our kettlebell is going directly into the body. Right. So we have a nice vertical forearm right here. We have a neutral wrist. Okay. We can apply some downward pressure to that fist, right? And it's going to push that elbow into the lat, okay? It's going to push that, that, that tricep into the lat. And if you've been following us for a while, the lats are your launch pad to lift the kettlebell, okay? Not, not here, okay? It's very, very inefficient to lift from here, okay? Think about how much extra range, uh, how much extra motion we're doing right here by doing this, as opposed to if we had a box in our hands, we would just take the box and we place it on a shelf, right? The thing is just, you know, lifting weights is, should, should give 
just give us some practical strength for everyday life, right? It shouldn't be overcomplicated, right? So, you know, basics are boring, but, you know, basics keep you safe. And, you know, if you eat well, you look better in a t-shirt <laughs> or in a dress, whatever. Um, so anyways, back to the point. The point is, is that we want to make sure that our upper arms are loaded to the lats, not loaded to the pecs. All right, cool. If you disagree with this, go ahead and uh, direct message me and I'll be happy to uh, carry on the dialogue with you, okay? This is not good, okay? Your front squat right here, it's going to pull you forward, okay? If you're doing presses and you're cleaning to right here, now you have to do one more step to get the bells overhead. So why don't we not do that? Clean to a proper rack position right here, get big with the lats and press, okay? So that's how we get the strength right there. We're going to teach the barn door. Okay. So I'm going to grab um, just a, a two bell sizes below what my working weight is going to be for the complex later. Yes, we're going to do a complex later. 10 minute EMA. All right. That's how we're going to finish today. All right. So clean up the kettlebells. Now, we've been uh, doing some R&D here on a good placement for your hands. And we find that the pinky being closest to the horn that is going to be closest to the foot is going to allow for your hand to be in a pretty uh, optimal position to prevent any internal rotation, right? Due to most of the handle being exposed closest to the face, okay, it, you're going to rotate in. However, if your lap is flexed and your grip is turned on or, or tight, okay, it's going to prevent that. All right. So if you, if you were to put your hand here and you're trying to apply some rotation in inside like that, and you put your hand here, every, all the opposite muscles right there are keeping it in place. So if we think about this, okay, we have that pinky closest to the horn. Okay. We also have a nice neutral. Okay. If you're into kettlebell sport, you're going to want a different rack position, right? However, if you're using a hard style kettlebell, you're take advantage of the hard style. It's got a short handle, right? It's, it's, it's meant for hard style movements, right? If you want to do sport, sport bells are going to be far more efficient for that, okay? So we're right in here, okay? Everything is turned on, and that's a good rack position for a single kettlebell, okay? Now, we're going to go double kettlebells, and we're going to teach, we're going to go into the barn door, we're going to do boulder rolls, and we're going to do pump press. Now, the pump press is a movement to where we do interlock the fingers, and we do a little dip and drop. This is designed to strengthen up the upper chest, center center of the chest right here, okay? Because when we're training in the rack position, our chest is under tension, right? So figured out a way to where we can strengthen up the upper chest while strengthening the abs, all right? So strong abs, strong rack, strong press, okay? Cool. Now. Let's get these bells up and let's work it, okay? So right here, okay, we're in our nice rack position. We don't wanna to be too wide, we just wanna be in our press position. If we're pressing from out here, we're gonna back bend. So when we build the rack, we build the rack in our pressing stance, okay? So we open, close, open, close, okay? When you open, you're not poking your head forward, you're keeping everything packed, and you're maintaining this position, okay? Elbows are not coming up. Elbows do come up for the boulder roll, okay? So we go up and we're just drawing circles. Yeah. Beauty, okay? So we have, we have barn door and we have boulder roll, okay? You might feel some crunchies going on in there uh, for that boulder roll, okay? Now, for the pump press, okay? Pump press, we're gonna get bells back up into that rack position, but we're gonna interlock the fingers, and we're really gonna force all that load on the body, and our movement is gonna come from the legs, okay? So we're right here, heads back. You're gonna allow the momentum of the bell to push you into another hinge motion. Good, so it's more or less like a piston, okay? Boom, 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 okay? So all together, oops, we interlock, okay? This, 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 this. From the side, this, 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 this. Cool, all right, 
So when we're using these uh, in a strength training program, these would be some accessory movements, right? Now, this would be layered uh, going into the barn door, teaching you that movement pattern, teaching you the pump press, teaching you the boulder roll, and then maybe layering them all together into an accessory based on a complex, right? So that would be like a barn door, boulder roll, pump press, okay? And it would just teach you to isolate all three movements. Now, that's not something that I would recommend doing in your day one attempt at these accessory movements, uh, drill movements as well, if you're unfamiliar with them, all right? So always approach new things at a base level. And then once you get more efficient at it, then add, you know, a few more sprinkles to it, okay? Cool. All right, so barn door, boulder roll, pump press. If you've got any more questions on those, feel free to email me, mavericksfieldhouse at gmail.com, or you can direct message me on Instagram as well, okay? And I'm very responsive. <laughs> you don't have to wait uh, 12 days for a response. I'll get back to you lickety split, okay? Now, let's go into how to improve our pulling, all right? So our pulling motion is going to be a row plus a half deadlift. And as we spoke about prior to getting into, uh, into the, um, the live, <laughs> uh, this is going to be teaching you about how to stay patient coming out of the rack position. All right. So when we come out of the rack position, if we're here okay, and we cast, that means that we have to chase. All right. If we unrack, and we allow the arms to get long, we can just follow, okay? It's easy to follow um, because you can do it at your own pace. If you have to chase something, now you have to react to that moment of, of chasing, right? So when we're coming out of that rack position, we wanna allow the arms to get long, and then we follow and we park, all right? So for the row half deadlift, right? What we're focusing on here, okay, is basically a reverse method, okay? So we're going to pull and stand up, okay? And then park the belt, okay? So pull, stand, park the belt. Pull, stand, park the belt. Pull, stand, park the belt. Now you notice that on that pull, I am holding that flex. You wanna hold that flex. So you can start to communicate with your back muscles, okay? When your back muscles are communicating properly, that means that you're going to lift more efficiently and you're not going to get hurt, okay? Cool. All right. So again, here we go. The bell is behind the big toe, all right? And we're also grabbing towards the back end of that handle. Because remember, we're always trying to get better with our hand placement in our our drills, all right? So if you're just grabbing the kettlebell randomly, you're gonna get a random result every single time. So be consistent with your setup and your hand placement, and you'll have more consistent uh, outcomes with your strength training, okay? So again, right here. Now, one thing that we wanna remember about moving the kettlebell, at the field house, the goal is kettlebell lifting. We want to lift a certain amount of weight based on the student, okay? So that means we're, we're looking at lifting heavy. We're not looking at lifting super light, right? Now, light and heavy is based on you, the student, not me compared to you or your friend compared to you, all right? And how we do that is we take the ideal body weight of the student and we we relate that to the percentage of the kettlebell in relation, right? So if we have a 200 pound individual, the ultimate goal for that 200 pound individual is to train double kettlebells at 70% of their body weight. That's for your basic movement patterns, swings, cleans, presses, front squats, snatches, Turkish get ups on the left and right, not with 70%, but 35%, okay? Um, and not a lot of reps two to three reps, and then building up to where you can do sets of five, okay? Now, there's a path to getting there, which is going to be 50% of your body weight, 60% of your body weight, and then the, the journey be, uh, before that, which is 25% of your body weight, single kettlebell, one arm, 30% and 35%, right? So 
there's a path, right? If you know the start of the path and you know where to finish at, you can sustain that finish line for, for the rest of your life, all right? Because we've only got so much heavy shit that we can do in our life. So let's just focus on maybe sustaining 70 to 80% of our body weight, and we can do that for a long time, okay? And it's always consistent. All right, so we've got that, the row plus half deadlift, all right? Again, if anybody needs any, any sort of uh, videos or anything like this, feel free to direct message me on Instagram, Mavericks Fieldhouse, not on kettlebell kings, okay? Now, our next movement is one of the most awkward movements that I think has ever been created for the kettlebell, all right? It's a, a spin off of rack pulls or um, hang pulls or clean pulls, whatever you want to call them, with Olympic weightlifting, right? So remember, we're doing kettlebell lifting, and we've got weightlifting, kettlebell lifting. And the difference between weightlifting and bodybuilding is, is that we as individuals training with kettlebells are trying to lift the most efficient amount of weight to its end point. Bodybuilding is about connecting the mind to the muscle. So we actually infuse a little bit of bodybuilding with our approach to kettlebell training. It is about connecting that mind to the kettlebell, all right? But we're not trying to hypertrophy per se. We're trying to increase the overall load that we lift so we can get to that 70% strength and maintain it. Okay? So with the mid pull, we got two options with this. You can either go straight from the ground, i.e. we call that uh, like a, a muscle mid pull or a power mid pull or a dead mid pull. Uh, any of those is fine, whatever you call it. It's okay. We're just going straight from the ground up. Okay? Now, again, when we grab the handle, we're grabbing towards the, the back end. Okay? We're pulling up, but now we're finishing right here. We want to think about the handle going towards our hip, okay? So take your fingers and palpate your hip bone, okay? Touch your hip bone right there. So, all right, your brain's like, okay, cool, I know where it's at. Now, when we think about the movement, all we're trying to do is get the pinky side of that horn to that right there, all right? If you stand up efficiently, the bells are going to flow long enough for you to react to go back down, okay? This is not a movement, that, this is not a... Um, a drill you want to do with heavy weight, especially if you're going straight from the floor, then you want to go a little bit lighter. When you do a uh, standard swing pattern where the bell is in front and you generate a hike, then you can go a little bit heavier. Okay? So we're right here. Okay? Head and neck are neutral. We're not looking up because when we look up, all the load is on our cervical or our neck. We don't want that. Okay? So head and neck neutral. Breath in. <clears throat> Now you notice the angle of my kettlebell, right, is right here. It's not up here. We're just pulling to here. The reason for that is, is if I were to do a muscle power dead clean, okay, I gotta keep the kettlebell as close to me as possible. I don't wanna come out you know, like that, because then I'm pulling here and then I'm gonna have to punch up. So we wanna think that the legs are lifting the kettlebell, and the hand is guiding to its final destination. So for right here, all right, the hips did the work, all right? We go down. Now, if I over-rotate, all right, if I come right here, I'm using way too much hip, all right? Remember, legs, okay, think, think right, right below that hip, down, legs lift the kettlebell, okay? Hips and hands, they just finish, right? So here, okay, it should look like it's just floating up. Good. And it rolls right out of the rack position when your hand is nice and loose, okay? Good deal. All right, so let's go back through everything, okay? We're gonna do five reps of everything, get a little sip of water, all right? We're gonna be doing five boulder, barn doors, five boulder rolls, five pump presses, okay? All right. But first, let's start out with the row deadlift, the mid pull, and then we'll go into the top part, okay? So all together, okay, we're gonna do five row half deadlifts, five mid pulls, and five of everything else, okay? I'll walk you guys through this, all right? Here we go. All right, so we're gonna row. One, two, 
three, four, five. Good. Shake it out. Okay. Now we're going straight from the ground up to the mid pole, right? Power muscle dead, whatever you want to call it. Remember about our pinky being closest to the horn, right? Right here. One. Pause. Two. Pause. Three. Four. And five. Okay. Okay, cool. Now, we're going to go into the barn doors, the boulder rolls, and the pump press. 15 reps. Okay, so make sure you're not going too crazy heavy. Okay, we're about to get a little proper burn right here. Okay, about right here. Woo. Remember, we got our pinkies closest to the horns. We're in our nice rack position. Heels are underneath our anatomical hips. One, two, three, four, and five. Good. Boulder rolls. Two, three, four, and five. Good. Pump press. One, two, three, four. That's it, y'all. Okay. No, just playing. All right. So now that we've got that, okay, now we're going to get into, let me get my dog. Austin, come here. Come on. Come here. Come on. All the way. Come here. Austin, come here. Come on. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Let's stay. All right, y'all. Uh, Austin's over here to hang out with us. Okay. So, um, good boy. All right, so now we're gonna get into our complex. Complex, give me a fun one, okay? Maybe not when we are going through it, but towards the end of it, it's gonna get a little, nope, Austin, come here. It's gonna get a little crazy, all right? All right, so how we're gonna do this, we're gonna set a clock for 10 minutes, okay? We're gonna do two cleans plus a front squat. Yeah, we're gonna get some squats in today, okay? So it's gonna be clean, front squat, clean, front squat, Strict press, four seesaw press, okay? When we're counting reps, we're counting total reps, okay? So clean and front squat is a compound movement. Seesaw press is gonna be a alternating unilateral movement, okay? So it's gonna be one, two, three, and four. And then one more front squat, okay? So go ahead and write that down. Every minute on the minute, okay? Two, clean plus front squat. One, strict press. Four, seesaw press. One, front squat. Park the kettlebell, shake it out. Minute two, we're gonna do the same thing again. Okay? All right? Cool. All right. All right, y'all. So, so, let's get a little warm up set in with our lighter bells. Okay? I'm gonna walk right through this. Okay? Ready to rock and roll? So clean, front squat, one, two, good, step, strict, C, saw, good, one, front squat, good, all right, okay, y'all, so that's going to be our warm-up set, and now we are going to start our clock for our EMOM. Okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, I'm going to be using my 24s for this right here. You guys choose some kettlebells that feel good to you. Make sure you've got, um, uh, make sure you've got some shaw because it's about to get pretty, pretty radical here. Now I'll have my clock going right here, 10 minutes. I'll have my clock going and um, for 10 minutes. So we're gonna be basically getting in um, a good amount of volume, okay? All right. So let's go ahead and get ready to set this clock. I'm gonna set it for 10 minutes. And I'm gonna give us a minute countdown, okay? Just so everybody can get prepared, get ready to rock and roll in. Let's see if anybody's got any questions. How are we doing over here? 
Hey, Beth, great to see you. Hopefully we get to chat after our uh, after the live today, okay? Um, all right, y'all. Coming up on it. Ooh, okay, let that anticipation kind of build up, right? <laughs> okay. All right, shake it loose. Good. It's a good opportunity for you to clear your mind, shake out the legs, get yourself mentally prepared for what's about to come. Okay, adjust yourself. <laughs> All that fun stuff. Okay. All right, y'all. We got ten second countdown. Okay. Remember, clean in front squat. Two strict press. One four seesaw. One squat. Two one. Let's go. Good. Coos. One, hoose. Two, step, strict. One, two, three, four. Step, squat, park the kettlebell. Woo, hoo, hoo, hoo. All right, y'all. Now, some of you are like, oh, well, coach, that only took like 20 seconds. I think we should do more. If you think you should do more, then bell up, okay? Bell up. We are only going through this one time every minute on the minute. This is how we can build strength for that skill and still have a good amount of time to recover. All right. Recovery is vital to gain strength. All right. Um, your strength patterns require training. And if you're training too heavy or too light, your body's just going to disregard what's going on. Okay. All right. Here we go. Set two. Two. One. Super. One, two, step, strict. One, two, three, four, step, squat. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. Talking about right there. Good, good, good. All right. Got plenty of time to get water. Now, if you're feeling good, you know, and you feel like you can lift a little bit heavier and still maintain the, the time, then go up, okay? So if I were to go up to 28 and it took me 30 seconds to do the complex, way too much time. We want to get this complex done in under 20 seconds, okay? So under 20 seconds is your goal. No, not for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, not for 10 minutes, okay? All right, y'all, here we go. Two, one, push, squat, good. One, two, strict. One, two, three, four. Excellent work, y'all. Get that squat, good. Remember, just like we spoke about in the beginning of the live, our rack position is here, okay? We're not bringing those kettlebells into this position because that's going to stretch out our back, okay, and build up an improper uh, front squat. And it's also gonna negate all the work that we're doing for our rack position, okay? Rack is here, load the lats so your rockets can launch the load overhead, okay? All right, here we go, y'all. Shake it loose. Good deal. All right, here we go. And let's go. Clean. One. Two. Step. Press. Seesaw. One, two, three, four. Step. Squat. Excellent work, y'all. Good deal. Good deal. Okay. So, uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, that's our fourth set right there. All right, you guys. Um, hopefully everybody's feeling good. We got six more sets to go. And um, if you can, all right, record a video of your set. Send it to me via direct message on Instagram. And I will be happy to give you a free critique of your movement patterns. Okay? Remember, Mavericks Fieldhouse on Instagram. Okay? Not a kid about kids. I'm just guest coaching for them today. All right? Okay, y'all, set five. Here we go. A frame position, nice and low. Hoosh, go. One, hoop. Two, step, press, see, saw. 
three, four. Excellent work, y'all. Load those lats. Hoop. Work that kettlebell. Remember, the way you pick it up, do your stuff, and the way you park it is how you're going to remember it when you do the next set. All right? <sighs> Learn to lift proper, and you'll get some power. <laughs> okay, y'all. Now, if some of you are having some issues, maybe with your squat pattern, listen to your hips. Okay, if your hips are pulling you forward, push your toes out, okay? Or maybe widen out your stance, okay? Or maybe bring your stance in, okay? All right, y'all, here we go, and let's get it. Nice rack position, patient, pop, drop, step, strict, one, two, three, four. Step, loose. Good. Shake it loose, y'all. Shake it loose. Doing great. Doing great. Good, good, good. That's six right there. Seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> All good. All good. Now, if you if you really wanted to go like crazy heavy with this, you could do ten total sets. And if you were working in 70 to 80 percent of your of your body weight, you'd be wanting to take, you'd be wanting to go like every three minutes, because you need that extra rest for your body to recover. Okay. Oops. All right, y'all. Here we go. Number seven. Come on. Oops. One. <clears throat> two. Hop. Strict. One. Two. Three. Four. Excellent work, y'all. Right, good, good, good. Doing well, y'all. Doing well. Okay. We got eight, nine, and ten coming up. Eight, nine, and ten. Hopefully everybody's feeling okay. Hopefully everybody's moving well. All right. Also, if you're just jumping in, we'll post this on the Kettlebell Kings page. Um, and uh, so you can check it there. And then it'll also be obviously on YouTube. Okay? So Remember, if you're feeling shy or anything like that, it's okay. Just set that camera up, get out of your comfort zone, send me some video, and I'll critique it for you, okay? If you learn to lift better in the beginning, you're gonna be able to sustain better lifts over time and be more efficient. Efficiency is gonna get you stronger with no pain. All right, we're behind the curve, we gotta go. <laughs> <clears throat> nice and tight to the body. Good, strict. Come on now, let's go. One, two, three, four. Let's go, load the lats. Oof. All right, I did myself dirty right there. <laughs> A little bit too much talking. Okay? Heart rate should be pretty good right now. If you're, if you're doing this, you're going too heavy, all right? If you're making journal entries, you're going too light, okay? <laughs> so somewhere in the middle, of that one and 10 sub zone. So right about five, four to six right in there. That's perfect, okay? Whoosh. All right, y'all, number nine right here. Here we go. Rock steady. Whoosh. One, keep it tight, lift with the legs. Good. Whoosh. One, two, three, four. Excellent work, y'all. Good. Right on, y'all. Right on. Oh. Last set, best set, y'all. Okay? Shake it out. Shake it out. Okay? Whew. Everything's talking right now. You're at the end of this workout. Feeling good. You're thriving. You're ready for the rest of the day. Or maybe it's evening for you. You're ready to go to sleep. <laughs> Okay, so either way, what you do next is going to be amazing, okay? Make it amazing, okay? It's all in here. It's all in that mindset, okay? All right. Set 10, y'all. You ready? All right. As we stay down here, let's go ahead and pin it and get it. Nice and low. 
Oh, fuck yeah. Pat yourself on the back, y'all. You done crushed it. You done crushed it. Way to go. Fist bumps for everybody. Fist bumps for everybody. Great job, y'all. Great job. Okay? All right. So, let me check. Oh, man. <laughs> we got some people in the cold right now. So, thanks for joining in. And uh, hope you guys had a good time. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, if you're still on here, remember... Send me a video of your complex today. You don't even have to do anything else. You just be like, hey, coach, I watched your live today. Can you check out my form? No strings attached, okay? I'm here to help you guys lift better, okay? If you want to lift long-term, that's your choice, okay? If you want to lift long-term with the field house, I can help you out with that too. But if you just want to lift, let me know. I'll help you out, okay? Cool. All right, y'all. Get about Kings, Maverick Field House. Signing off. You guys have a beautiful day and much love for joining me on this uh, uh, skills and drills. Get about clean and press live workout. Cheers, y'all. Okay. Boom. Uh, end it. All right. <laughs>